Hello everyone, this is Joe the Orange and welcome to the series Who is Pike Boss? where we're going to find out once and for all. Once and for all. Who is a fucking Pike Boss? Is it Leonidas? Is it Alexander? Is it Miltiades? Is it Kanane? It could be either one. Maybe because pikes are so fucking strong. Or is it because the Greek commander trees are so diverse? You can play anything on them, including pikes on every fucking commander. But we're starting off with the king. The King Leonidas. Now, if you want to know what this guy does for your pikes, you're in for a treat. Every single one of his three abilities is useful. Let's start off with the Fight in the Shade ability. It's basically an enhanced version of what Pikes already have, which is Ray Shields. Basically, if you're holy shit, it just started pissing down rain here. So if you hear that, that's what it is. It's just fucking pissing there. It would be a good time to raise shields or fight in the shade. Basically, it protects you from the rain of arrows. See, I'm um, see, I'm doing a pun because it's raining and uh, I've got my shields up and there's blocking the rain of arrows. Haha. <laughs> Which is useful. You will find that when you play. Kainani, Milto, basically any other commander. Archers and javelins are really going to wreck you. But with Leonidas, it's not too worrisome at all. I do not give a shit if they shoot at me. In fact, it usually ends up that you get the achievement for blocking damage, thanks to them shooting at you when you have your shields raised. The next ability is Shield Bash, and it's basically the only way Pikes can beat War Dogs. As you can see now, they're chewing through me. But once I pop that Shield Bash ability, if I even fucking did, I don't even know if I did. Usually, when you pop that Shield Bash ability, it kills a lot of War Dogs. And that is a big counter to Pikes. But now that War Dogs are less popular, you hardly ever see them. Which is good for you, it just means that you run into your counter a lot less now that they're less popular since the nerves. And one thing I do like to do, if I have an archer player on my team, I just tell them to shoot me when I'm fighting war dogs. Because I'm probably going to lose, but if the archers start shooting into that combat situation, it usually ends up a draw. They lose three units of war dogs, I lose one unit of pikes. So it's worth it. One thing you may have noticed, I do like to separate my pikes from each other. I never have them even remotely close to each other on Leonidas. Because he does have that hold the line ability. Is it still fucking called hold the line? Yeah, it's still called hold the line. They changed the ability that much since the Steam version that... I, f I couldn't remember if they changed the name or not. This ability is so much fucking different than what it used... Well, what it first was. And what you just saw me do with that unit is I'm right clicking and dragging so the formation comes up and I'm moving them into a position where they won't get flanked and keeping his two melee units at the front of my unit. My other unit is going for that catapult, so that's my main target. It was all a distraction, the other shit. The reason that they're a priority is that I can't just go to the cat point or, well, our team can't go to the cat point and start putting pressure on the enemy to come back and defend if they have catapults still on their team. Now I'm going to try to turn around. I did make it on time. Pretty lucky on Leonidas. The second one got me a bit. He didn't charge, it must have been Caesar. Now you will find when you're playing Pikes, you're like, oh man, if I was Kanani right now, I would have drilled all those motherfuckers. And then other times you're like, if I was Leonidas, I wouldn't have roused. And other times you're like, if I was Miltai 80s, I would just be the king, cunt. I would just be the fucking king. Even though he wasn't king. He's king of this fucking game, that's what he is. Unfortunately, this infantry has stopped me from reaching my goal of killing that other catapult unit. I really want to kill him. So I'm going for it. I'm fucking going for it. <laughs> A bit early, early to go for it, but I'm doing it. And then this cunt comes in, and then I'm like, okay, now I'm not going for it. They almost had me routed too. Almost had me routed. I just wanted to kill those catapults so badly. 
But now the pricks ran away. I can't do shit. And I'm surprised I have three units. It's a new route system. I think it's... Uh, I, I want something in between what it was and what it is now. Because that pike dude with about three dudes or whatever standing in the background. Can you just fuck off? And like these guys I'm fighting now, shouldn't they have fucked off by now? I outnumbered them so much. Uh, it's kind of... You know what I actually wish they did? Is the opposite of what the old morale system was. When you were fighting five dudes with a hundred dudes in melee combat, their morale should be dropping. Not when they're out of combat, they're like, Oh fuck, oh shit, oh, I'm so scared, I'm standing by myself! It's like, fuck man, grow some balls, <laughs> you're standing by yourself. Like, think about it, if you're in a war, you're fighting a bunch of dudes and you're outnumbered hundreds of five, I would shit my pants. But, if there's five of us left and everyone else is dead around me, I'll just be like, hey, oh, is anyone gonna do me in for desertion? Because I'm going home. Fuck this shit. <laughs> Maybe that's what the old morale system was based on. These guys finish fighting, they're just like, yeah, fuck this shit. I'm going home. Gonna go see my missus. Have some brewskis. <laughs> Maybe that's what. Maybe that's why they got it right the first time. It's also another reason that pikes are just getting stronger and stronger. They have removed. This is one thing I've noticed. It's massive. They have removed the delay between putting your pikes down, which is just makes them at least twice as good. And then you don't have too many morale issues in the game anymore. It's very hard to route now. So stronger again for pikes. War dogs are fucking weaker. Stronger again for pikes. Cavs weaker. This is all coming up, pikes. It does mean that. Units that rely on breaking other units are weaker now, such as Barbarians in general, Miltides, and Scipio, even though Scipio still seems to be doing pretty damn well. Then again, Miltides is still doing pretty damn well. It's mostly barbs that can, uh, can fucking suck a dick, they need a buff or something. But that's just my opinion. I think barbs really need some help. Especially with the War Dog nerf, I just don't see any point. That's why I'm doing this series. I've given up. I've fucking given up on that shit. I leveled Versi up to tier 8 or 9. I think it's 9. Still a useless cunt. He's alright, <laughs> you know. He's alright, but I was using tier 6 units with a tier 9 commander. Did not feel that much of an advantage compared to other commanders. When you level Germanicus up, you can feel the, that shit. You can feel the power. Level Versi up, you're like, I'm just fi finally catching up. Now back to the game, I was relying on my allies finishing that catapult off. They were running towards my team. Unfortunately, their catapults are still alive. And I have I have to go for him. I just have to go for him because he's just going to keep launch launching those fucking boulders, bouncing off that tent and hitting me. I'll never get the cap. I'll be losing dudes at the same time. So we're going in, trying to take on their whole damn team. But we are at a little bit of a disadvantage. They have more units and more troops in general. But if I can get to those catapults, force the engagement, hopefully some people try to protect him, I can wipe out, hopefully, hopefully, a lot of their dudes. It's not looking good for the two guys here though. And they're gone. Okay, see the... Why were they there? I guess the little tiny scout unit? They should have fucked off a long time ago. I don't even think they got in combat there. There's Rant. Oh, this guy's making a big mistake. Oh, oh, oh maybe not. Maybe not. He did turn, turn in time. He was testing the waters. It is looking a bit dangerous now. They are surrounding me. But in this situation, if I had to be any commander, it would be Leonidas. Because of that ability, hold the line, which I clicked there. I don't know why the fuck I clicked there. Sometimes I'm like, I should use my bindings, but you know, I'm fucking lazy. And that cab just made a massive mistake. This is good for our team. 
He charged in there as a blob. If he charged one unit in there, he may have failed, but he could use the other two charges and go in for a flank or a rear. Blob charging on Cav just is not a thing anymore. Just don't do it. Now in that situation, if it wasn't for hold the line, I definitely would have routed. That is the great thing about Leo, and plus he has that uh, shield bash ability, which will buy you even more time. My other unit is having a bit of a pike to pike duel. What I do like to do when I have enough time is press space. You can actually turn it on so it's always on, but if you hold down space, it'll highlight the enemy units and just try to line your pikes up better than theirs and you pretty much won the pike duel. I just hate having it on all the time. A lot of people have it on all the time, but it just makes the game look too fucking ugly for me, to be honest. So I just rather press space when necessary. In this game, there was a lot of times I was so close to routing, and that is what makes this guy so strong. You have hold the line, and he is so good at recovering from screw ups. If you don't get your pikes down in time, you always got that shield bash ability. It also counters one of his biggest threats, which is War Dogs. Then you have your Rage Shields, another big enemy of Pike, so you can just block all those range units from melting you. The disadvantages are that you don't really have any way of catching the enemy. If you play Kainani or you play Miltai, these Pikes, you always have some way of catching the range units surprise attacks and with Kainani you can mow down the enemy pretty damn quickly. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. I'd say Leo is the one you want to start on. That's not to say that Leonidas is the strongest spy commander, it just means that he's way more forgiving than the other ones. For example, if I team up with an archer player or a javelin player, I'm going to be Leo. He's very good at protecting people and they can help me out. But if I'm playing Kainane with an archer or a javelin player, usually I just pretend I'm playing solo because I get blown up very quickly. I need to get in there. It's a totally different experience than Leo Pikes. They both have their strengths and weaknesses. Then you have Miltiades. He's kind of in the middle. He can protect the range units very well. He's got that fear ability they can put on people at range to slow them down if they are attacking your ranged units. Not only that, he has breaking ranks, so he can run up to the enemy, put some pressure on them, catch enemy ranged units such as archers, catapults, etc. He's a bit of a fucking do everything dude. But he does get blown up like Kanani by archers, catapults, etc. And both Kanani and Miltides do have low morale so that can be a bit of an issue, while well, Leonidas does not suffer from that problem. Now I'm not going to tell you right now which one I do think is the strongest. People that have watched my videos for a long time will probably guess, but I might surprise you. At the end of the series I'll tell you which one I personally think is the strongest. Nearly, I'm guessing, probably fucking 95% of people will disagree with me. Because it's Leonidas, ah, I fucking tricked you. I haven't made up my mind yet. I'm four years old. I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> In fact, I have not even played Alexander Pikes yet. I'm leaving that one to the last because it seems pretty shit on paper. I, I'm not even sure if Anvil works when you put your Pikes down. I'm pretty sure that it takes you out of combat, which stops the Anvil, and then you're fucked. I could be wrong. But, I'm guessing right now, Alexander's out of the fucking race. And you might be sitting at home thinking, why did you bring that up? Because I was trying to go through who do I actually think is the best Pike Commander. And I thought, man, I have not even played Alexander Pikes yet. Uh, he's going to be relying mostly on just how OP Pikes are at the moment. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can get a good fucking replay playing Alexander Pikes, but I don't think it will have anything to do with his actual abilities. And by the way, I really need to buy a new chair. Listen to this shit.
So fucking hell, man. We cannot move in any direction without, without this shit happening. It's an old chair. It's it's very fucking old. It doesn't even have the corners anymore. It's just wood on the corners. I've worn them out somehow. Fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've sat in this chair way too much. That's the reason I don't want to get rid of it. It knows my butt cheeks so well. <laughs> I've fucking sat in this chair for about five fucking years. Five damn long years I've been in this chair. <laughs> but it's time to get a new one. In about two years. <laughs> I'm gonna wear this chair down to nothing. That's my goal. My life, my life goal. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this, this fucking video. And my rant about my chair in the last... Second. And all that shit. And uh, yeah. See you later.